Good morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation to speak to the ESTG Annual Conference uh, 2020. My name is Philip Nugent. I'm the Assistant Secretary with responsibility for Circular Economy, Waste Policy and Natural Resources at the Department of the Environment, Climate and Communications. And I want to talk to you this morning about implementation of the Waste Action Plan and I'll talk a little bit also about the development of so the Waste Action Plan for a Circular Economy was published on the 4th of September. Um, it replaced the previous policy, which was a resource opportunity that covered the period from 2012 to 2020 and served us very well in the, pro in the, in the uh, process that Ireland has been uh, going through since the early 2000s, really, where we have transformed our waste performance from being on the wrong end of a, a European Court of Justice judgment to being a, a member state that's performing well against all its targets under existing EU legislation and is making good progress towards our, our new targets. We were also developing a plan in the context of the Waste Action Plan, uh, sorry, the Climate Action Plan, which was published in July 2019. And this is a key um, complementary policy document to the Climate Action Plan because uh, a number of the objectives are, are shared. So for example, in developing the Waste Action Plan for a circular economy, we knew that the business as usual model couldn't be sustained and that our current consumption and production patterns uh, would require two to three planets. We also know that materials consumption, consumption has trebled since 1970 from 26.7 billion tonnes to 92, 92 billion tonnes in 2017. And we also know from the, uh, the MacArthur Foundation that uh, climate action efforts focusing on transitioning from fossil fuels uh, supplemented by energy efficiency measures can only address 55% of emissions and the, re the remaining 45% comes from making things. So we need to make less stuff or we need to make stuff better so that the stuff that we do make is uh, is available for repair or for use and that it can be kept in productive use for longer. So that's a, a kind of a, a key part of how the Waste Action Plan can achieve a, a climate objective as well. We were also working in the context of the, the EU Circular Economy Action Plan uh, the measures agreed in, in 2018, which are now entering force, and uh, also the European Green Deal published in March of this year, which signposted a second uh, cl uh, circular economy action plan. Similarly, Next Generation EU, including recovery and resilience funds, focus, focus on supporting recovery with particular focus on policies and projects that support the digital and green transitions. We're obviously always working within the context of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, the relevant commitments in the Programme for Government. Um, we placed a really strong emphasis in the process of developing the plan on stakeholder engagement, including uh, the local government sector. So uh, we had a waste advisory group, which we established in January of this year and which met in person a couple of times before the introduction of the COVID-19 related uh, restrictions and then really started to accelerate its work after the, uh, the introduction of the restrictions. So meeting over Zoom on a weekly basis with about 50, 60 people each week, uh, stakeholders from across the spectrum to really drill into specific issues like, for example, uh, single-use plastics or the transition to the circular economy or how we could uh, how we could use the existing reach of all of the players who are around the table in, uh, in educating people about uh, the transition to a circular economy and the need for us to have a, uh, a kind of a, a societal approach to, to waste. We also had a consultation process that kicked off in September 2019 and a consultation document, a formal consultation document published in December 2019 also, and we received around uh, 280 submissions uh, on those. Just for anyone who's interested, the full membership, uh, all of the meeting papers and minutes of the Waste Advisory Group meeting are available on the department's website. The plan itself then is a uh, it's an action focused plan that we think will place Ireland at the vanguard of EU performance. It has a range of uh, short, medium and long term actions, uh, ranging also in terms of their, their impact. So we have some some small scale uh, measures and we have the, the kind of the big ticket items, which will some of which will require uh, primary legislation. Others will uh, can be introduced on a, on a kind of an administrative or a policy basis. And it's really important for us to remember that it's a marathon, not a sprint. So this is a five-year plan. Uh, we don't expect or intend to achieve all of our objectives within year one or year two. We need to uh, we need to properly plan for the work over the five-year period. The overarching policy objectives of the plan are number one to shift the focus away from waste disposal and treatment to ensure that materials and products remain in productive use for longer thereby preventing waste and supporting reuse through a policy framework that discourages the wasting of resources and rewards circularity. So 
that's a kind of a long-winded way of saying we're trying to move the focus up the production uh, life cycle away from thinking about what do we do with the waste that we produce to how do we design out waste from the start how do we educate people to make the right consumer choices to avoid the creation of waste uh, from the outset also then a very strong focus on making producers who manufacture and sell disposable goods for profit making them environmentally accountable for the products they place on the market so not loading all of the all of the responsibility on the consumer Ensuring that measures support sustainable economic models, for example, by supporting the, re the use of recycled or virgin materials, harnessing the reach and influence of all sectors, including the voluntary sector, R&D, producers, manufacturers, regulatory bodies, including local authorities and civic society. And then supporting clear and robust institutional arrangements for the waste sector, including through a strengthened role for local authorities. And I'll, I'll come back to that at the end to talk about those, uh, those new rules for, for the local government sector. Just to focus on some of the headline actions, so um, one of the one of the strongest actions in the plan, I think, is around giving responsibility to waste collectors for the achievement of our EU targets. Um, so this is automatically bailing them into uh, the achievement of those targets that uh, that we face and which are very ambitious over the over the coming years. So we're not saying to collectors that you must do, for example, uh, pay by weight for commercial, or that you must strengthen your enforcement. Um, measures, uh, your anti-contamination measures, we're leaving it open to them to decide which measures will work best to ensure that they achieve the targets that are set. Uh, so we do think that uh, pay by weight for commercial uh, is, is likely to feature as a response from some collectors, but we're not going to impose that on them. Um, we want to give them the flexibility, but at the same time mandate them with, the, uh, with those specific targets. Deposit and return scheme is another uh, another big and early action which we've already moved on to have a consultation which is underway at the moment on the different models that are available for operating a, a deposit and return scheme. The idea is that the scheme will apply to uh, plastic uh, plastic bottles and aluminium drinks uh, containers. Um, and similar to the way that uh, deposit and return schemes work in other jurisdictions and that um, that are operating quite successfully there. The use of economic instruments, so this is something that has been flagged previously, the uh, the introduction of a, of a latte levy and also the introduction of a, a recovery levy and an increase in the landfill levy. And then, as I said at the outset, a waste action plan as a precursor to a whole of government circular economy strategy because up until now I think we have tended to focus on uh, on on waste as the kind of the, 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 the only area in which circular economy has uh, has, has implications when really the circular economy is something that touches all areas of, of government and all sectors of our economy. Just to look at some of the specific uh, actions then around households and businesses. So as I said, uh, recycling targets for waste collectors, uh, standardized bin colors across the state. So black for residual, green for recycling and brown for organic waste. A waste recovery levy to encourage recycling with a commensurate increase in the, uh, the, the landfill levy to ensure that we don't uh, inadvertently incentivize landfill over recovery, a really ambitious education and awareness campaign to improve waste segregation, um, then in terms of food waste, a commitment to have our food waste by 2030, uh, sustainable food waste management options for all homes and businesses, waste segregation infrastructure for apartment dwellers, I'll come back to this under the, uh, the actions for, for local government, then in terms of plastic packaging and single-use plastics, uh, the deposit and return scheme, single-use plastics ban, including cotton bud uh, sticks, cutlery, plates, stirrers, chopsticks, straws, polystyrene containers, and oxidegradable plastic products. So in line with the commitments under, this, under the single-use plastic directive, but also we're looking at other options to go beyond the, uh, the, the basic requirements of the single-use plastics directive and see how we can introduce our own bans to bring us again ahead of where, uh, where the rest of the EU will be. And then also reducing the number of single-use plastics being placed on the market by 2020. Extended producer responsibility is something that has worked really well for Ireland in terms of uh, we or uh, packaging and uh, tyres. So we're looking to strengthen that and uh, make mandatory EPR for all packaging producers before the 2024 EU deadline. We want to make producers liable for eco-modulation of fees and uh, all packaging to be reusable or recyclable by 2030. Construction and demolition waste is a is a, an enormous waste stream in terms of volume and uh, and, and weight. So we need to uh, we've set a number of uh, ambitious actions here, including the revision of the two thousand six best practice guidelines for C and D waste. We want to streamline byproduct notification and end of waste decision making processes to keep as much waste uh, to keep as much material out of the waste stream as possible. 
and we are setting a working group to develop national end waste applications for priority waste streams. Looking at textiles, this is an area that got uh, some attention at the at the launch of the plan, uh, and we want to we're setting up an, an action group to explore options to improve improve future circular circularity in textiles. Uh, working with Irish designers and retailers to promote eco design for clothing and textiles, and to look at the global impacts of international trade in used textiles. Treatment um, is a, is another area of focus. So we want to review uh, state support for the development of recycling infrastructure. Look at the legislation and procedures for developing uh, waste management in infrastructure and standardised waste streams accepted at civic community sites. So again, how can we support uh, the development of indigenous treatment capacity uh, in Ireland? The Whirlers have been a real success story in recent years and we want to build on that and uh, to look to have an expanded role for the Whirlers to address priority waste enforcement challenges. An unauthorised sites action plan and an anti-dumping toolkit and then to build on the range of uh, fixed penalty notices for breaches of, of waste law, uh, because we know that these have worked quite well. And then finally, just a, a, that, that piece around the government leadership on circular economy, so a commitment to develop a high level all of government circular, circular economy strategy, the inclusion of green criteria and circular economy principles into all pu public procurement. And local authorities are, uh, are, have a significant footprint when it comes to public procurement, so they will be a key driver of that change towards uh, the adoption of green criteria. And circular economy principles in their procurement uh, processes. We have started to develop circular economy sectoral roadmaps in conjunction with the EPA um, and the EPA's National Waste Prevention Programme will be transitioning to become Ireland's circular economy programme which is great building on the success of, uh, of the NWPP in recent years and then we also want to explore how Ireland's digital sector can accelerate uh, the transition to a circular economy. Just to pick out some of the local government elements of the plan, um, obviously the Waste Action Plan itself, uh, it, that starts the, the clock ticking on the development of the new uh, Regional Waste Management Plan in 2021 and under our Action Plan we signal that the, uh, the Regional Waste Management Plan will contain targets for reuse, repair and resource consumption. So again, the Waste Management Plan being consistent with the focus in the Waste Action Plan around moving up the production life cycle uh, to try to ensure that goods and products are kept in productive use for as long as possible. The NWCPO has, uh, has had a really uh, strong role in bringing a professionalization to the, to the waste sector. Uh, but one of the things that we identified in the discussions at the Waste Advisory Group was the absence of a, of a kind of a formalized statutory uh, consumer complaints outlet. So um, given the NWCPO's position uh, in terms of its knowledge and oversight of the, the operation of the waste uh, collection market, the view in the, the waste uh, advisory group was that the NWCPO would be best placed to that. So to do that, so the NWCPO will take on that role. That will require uh, changes to primary legislation and we are working on the development of a circular economy bill which will amend the 1996 Act to do things like provide that enhanced role for the NWCPO and then also to change the uh, end of waste and byproducts uh, processes. We mentioned in the plan that uh, local authorities could have a role in making determinations on those uh, end of waste and byproduct uh, assessments. Uh, so I've, I've mentioned that here. It's not something that we're saying absolutely should happen, but it's a question that we're asking that in some cases, perhaps the role is more appropriate to uh, to local decision makers rather than the EPA and that's something that we want to discuss with the EPA and, uh, and the sector. Something that uh, we have had a number of discussions with the EPA on and with the, uh, with the CCMA is around the, the EPA's monitoring role in relation to uh, local authority environmental performance. So at the moment we the EPA does have a, a statutory power to, uh, to issue a, a direction to, uh, to local authorities where it feels that environmental performance is below where it needs to be, but that's a very high bar and it's a very significant step for the EPA to take. So reviewing that and looking to see if there's a more nuanced and, um, and calibrated approach to the EPA's uh, oversight role. We also talk about the need in the, in the plan for us to look beyond just waste legislation and, uh, and waste regulation to see if there are other tools that are available to statutory decision makers to support the objectives in the Waste Action Plan. So we're thinking planning legislation, for example, and the Residential Tenancies Act to ensure that food waste segregation services 
are available to apartment dwellers. And then also looking to how we can use the event licensing system to reduce or eliminate single-use plastic. So for example, as a condition of a particular event, the event organizer uh, has to commit to uh, the use of, um, of reusable uh, items where they're providing food or, or beverages or things like that. So again, it's to, to be as creative as possible and look beyond uh, simply the waste regulation system to see how we can use the other tools that we have at our disposal. That idea around the clear and robust institutional arrangements for the, the waste sector, including a strengthened role for local authorities. This is an important one because the, um, the CCPC report from a number of years ago on the operation of the waste market suggested that there were uh, 38 statutory bodies in the waste regulation business. Now, I don't subscribe to that point of view. What they were counting there was 31 local authorities, NTFSO, NWCPO, the Whirlers and the Regional Waste Management Planning Offices. There, there aren't 38 statutory bodies. Uh, I don't think it's as crowded an institutional landscape as, as was suggested. But at the same time, I think there is a need for us to have greater clarity around who is who is doing what. Um, and just to ensure that the, that the huge successes that the local government sector has delivered for the state in terms of improving our waste performance, that we can build on that and uh, and continue to have, build on the success that the, that the regional waste management planning offices, the Whirlers, NWCPO and NTFSO have, have brought. So the action plan has, a, has a, a broader focus than previous waste policy. There are new challenges for all of the players here. We're not just looking at that question about what do we do with the waste that we produce or what do we do with the, uh, the, the material that's illegally dumped. And I think the local government sector has shown in, in recent years that it's absolutely up for that challenge. And uh, and as I say, we, we want to build on that. But at the same time, I think there are gaps that exist between local government roles and the department's role in setting policy and our role in terms of setting the, the policy and regulatory framework. And I think we need to address that gap to ensure full realization of the plan. And just to to be fair to the to the shared services and to individual local authorities, and ensure that they're best positioned to fully realize all of the objectives in the plan. Uh, and we're fully committed to working with the CCMA and the LGMA to resolve any of those sorts of issues. So just in summary, it's a really ambitious plan. The local government sector is gonna be absolutely central to delivering on that. We have enjoyed a really good relationship with the, the sector in um, for a number of years now. Um, we have a partnership approach to developing the, uh, the Whirlers to working with the NWCPO, the NTFSO, and uh, and with the, the regions. Um, and we want to continue that uh, and build on it because the plan depends on uh, the full support and buy-in of the local government sector. And we look forward to that. Thank you.